Okay, we are back with some more Dwyer tips. Last week we talked about the D in diamond, which has to do with the word decide. And I kind of went on a rant because I talked about the concept of how you see the world because in the last six months I've been really thinking about this. Okay, you can decide where you are. That's a good step. But before you do that, decide how you see the world. And I shared last week that I see the world as a game, as a journey, and I also see it as a stage. So once you figure that out, and those are metaphors, you can have any metaphor, right? Anything, you know, sometimes people want to make it into a story, like life is, and then they have all these words and sentences. It's a metaphor when you say life is like a race, right? Or life is like a box of chocolates. You know, those are metaphors. When you say things like, well, life is about making a difference and helping people, that's, that's an explanation. <laughs> it's not a metaphor. So life is like a watermelon, you know, where you have to spit out the seeds. You know what I mean? So that's a metaphor. So decide what your metaphor is for life. And you might say, well, I don't know. I don't know. What, how do I see the world? My father, as I said last week, he said life is hell or purgatory or whatever. I personally see life as a game. I was talking to somebody this afternoon and we were talking about sales and I said to her, I love sales. And she looked at me like I had three heads. I said, no, no, I really love sales. The other day I was making phone calls and I had a goal. My goal was to talk to five people, right? So I make the first phone call, no, we're not buying. I said, okay, fine. Second person, they said, no, not buying. The third person said, no, not buying. The fourth person said, no, not buying. And I thought to myself, I have never had a streak like this. I've never had five people in an hour tell me no. Like it's never happened in five years. And I was like, I was wishing for the next person to tell me to drop dead. I was wishing for the next person to tell me no. So I pick up the phone and this is my attitude. This is my attitude. Pick up the phone, I make the phone call, and the woman says, sure, we'll bring you to Boston. Yeah, no problem, this is great. And we wrapped up the date, and I got a yes. <laughs> I don't know if I was upset or not, you know, because I wanted to have five people tell me no in a row. Because for me, it's just a game. I don't take it that seriously. Okay, so a game, a journey, a stage, Decide how you see the world. And then, out of that, decide where you are now. Where are you in the game? Where are you in the journey? Where are you on stage? Where are you in your metaphor for life? You know, that's the first step. Today I want to talk about something a little different, which is the second letter in diamond, which is the I, which stands for what is important. Now, I do this lecture. And the title of the lecture is The Importance of Focus. And when people come into my lecture, a lot of times I'll stand outside as people are coming in and I'll hand them a card. And on the card, it says, what is important? And they'll look at me like, you know, what's this? Well, I want you to think about this, I'll say. And they'll say, well, I don't really know. I don't know what's important in my life. I say, I know you don't. But if you did know, could you write down a word? And there's a line here on the card, very clear. And I say, look, don't write a sentence. Don't write a paragraph. We don't need a book, right? We just need a word. And they look at me like, what do you mean? I say, well, what's important to you? Like, what's important? And I get people to think about it as they're coming into my lecture. And I say, listen, it's not that difficult. It's things like love, or family, or travel, or children, or your pet's name, or money, or freedom. Just start thinking, look within, and come up with a word, and write down on this card the answer. And by the way, you can change it. This is not written in stone. It's just written on a piece of paper. And if you want, I'll give you two cards in case you change your mind. A lot of people have a hard time with this because, I don't know, for some reason they don't want to think about it. They don't want to think about what is important. So this week I, I woke up, I don't remember, I think it was Thursday, and I woke up with this idea that business is a race. You know, I'm doing this sizzle reel coming up in about a month and I'm thinking about, you know, how do I put this 
speaker reel together or this sizzle reel and I, I thought to myself wouldn't it be wonderful at the beginning of the reel you hear a gunshot and then people running business is like a race and when you get distracted that's when you trip right so I'm thinking of this as far as my my two-minute sizzle reel again a metaphor for not life per se but for business now think about it when the gun goes off and you're on a race a sprint right or maybe even a marathon I don't know and you're running towards the finish line what's important to you in those moments only one thing and that is to win right or to beat your own time or to beat someone else's time you're not thinking about making a ham sandwich you're not thinking about you know going to the movies and checking out that film that you per that somebody told you about right you're just thinking about one thing speaking of one thing I read a book by Keller Williams highly highly recommend this whether you're in real estate whether you're working with Keller Williams it doesn't matter what you're doing it's a fabulous book top on my list the one thing I think it's called the one thing Keller Williams it's all about drilling down and finding out what is important to you and understanding that this is a value situation like not everybody values everything the same way and it's impossible you get two or three people together some people what's important to them is making a good living right their career that's the number one thing that's important to them or other people it's their family it's their kids it's it's time with their loved ones some people might say no that's really not important to me I love to travel the world I love to be independent you know so most people talk about goals you know New Year's Eve resolutions or goals getting something done you know going to the moon or winning that race or writing that book okay those are all great things but where I start is with the question, what is important to you? Which is a value statement. Now, I understand that it might not just be one thing, right? It might be 10 things, it might be five things. But this is what I've discovered. It's probably not a thousand things. And it's probably not a million things. It's probably just a few things that if you just sat down in quiet or reflection or meditation and you thought about it and you dreamt about it and you journaled it you would come up with what's important to you now everyone talks about this the wheel of life you know we talk about the physical aspect of your life your health your weight you know everything that has to do with that or your relationships your family or your career or your money or your state of mind you know there's I, I just can't think there's a million categories you know maybe maybe there's just two categories now that I think about it right the first category is your personal life and the second category is your business life if you have a business life and hopefully when you are at work you focus on that and when you're home you focus on that and I think the reason why there's a lot of stress today is because when people are at work they're thinking about their home life on average we pick up their, our phones our cell phone I don't even have mine here but you pick up your cell phone you tap it you swipe it you click it over 2,617 times a day that's a lot you know people looking at social media they're all over the place the average person that goes to work wastes about 12 and a half hours every single week because they're going to work and they're not engaged at work they're looking at social media they get distracted like a squirrel right now I don't know how they figure this out but 650 billion that's B billion dollars is wasted every single year because people go to work and they're working on a project but they get derailed they get sidetracked maybe something beeps on their phone or they're looking at social media and it takes them like 23 minutes to get back on track in the business that they're in so two categories really really simple if you're not retired and you're working this applies you have your business life or you have your career life and you have goals or what's important in that area and then you have your personal life your friends your your family 
uh, things that have to do with those categories. So really, to make it really simple, to make it really simple, there's just simply two categories. I think when we get them mixed up, you know, when we're coming home five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night, and we're thinking about work and we're staying up all night pondering, you know, and today it's easy to do, especially with people that work from home like I do, it's hard to see the distinctions between work, right, and also your personal life. And in my case, they kind of connect, really, because what I'm passionate about, my personal life shows up in my business life, and so um, it's very hard to distinguish them. So two categories. But the point of all of this is to ask the question, what's important to you this year? What's important to you this month? What's important to you this week? What's important to you today? And, and I think you need to really dial it down. Now, when, when I do prospecting or when I do sales, I'll set a timer. I'll just set a timer for an hour. And in that 60 minutes, the only thing that's important to me is to make phone calls, outgoing phone calls. I don't look at social media. I don't look at Messenger. Um, I'm not baking a cake at the same time. I won't answer the door unless it's the fireman and the house is on fire, you know, that sort of thing. So my point is narrow focused for a specific time on a specific action. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I love to multitask. My boss rewards me for multitasking. He wants me to do 10 things and I'm good at it. Well, first of all, I'm not good at it and I don't think you are either. I know we have to sometimes, but multitasking isn't really good for us. On average, 400,000 people every year get hurt in car accidents because they're not focusing on what's important, which is driving. They're looking at the cell phone at the wrong time and they get into a fender bender, they go to the hospital, something happens, whiplash, right? So these things happen. People are all over the place. And sadly in America, 4,000 people die every year because they look at their cell phone at the wrong time. Now, I'm not suggesting being on this podcast and looking at your Facebook is gonna put you in mortal danger. But I know it tires you out it definitely tires you out. When you try to juggle two things, three things, four things at work, and you're not focused on just one thing, and you're always getting interrupted, and people are coming in and asking you questions, or you're looking at your, your, your email that pops up and bings, you really can't get a lot done. So laser focus has to do with picking a target or picking something that's really important to you and and going after it. About two weeks ago, I, I dropped in um, an automobile place that, that's not too far from here. A friend of mine, his name is Jerry, a guy I trust. So I took my car in for an oil change and next to him is an office building. Um, and the office uh, has a window and it also has a door. And I know the guy that works there, I won't mention his name. And I opened the door, knocked on the door and I started talking to my friend. And, and within, I would say like less than 30 seconds, he said, Greg, listen, the door was closed for a reason. I really got to get this done. And I was like, oh man, okay, I get it. Like this guy was laser focused. Same thing with the deadline. If you have to get a project done by tomorrow, you don't want to be doing 10, 15 things. You want to be doing the one thing. And I highly recommend this book by Keller Williams called The One Thing. So I'm looking at my time. We're going to take a fast commercial. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. You've been listening to the Greg Dwyer Radio Show. Brought to you by motivational speaker Greg Dwyer. On buildingfortunesradio.com. Do you wish you could sharpen your focus on what matters most to you and achieve more? Then you owe it to yourself to read Greg's ebook at gregdwyerebook.com. Okay, we're back and we're talking about the topic of importance. What is important to you? The first thing is to identify it. First thing is to separate your personal and your business 
uh, life, right? And there's not a million categories. There's not a thousand categories. There's probably, like for me, I got five categories in my per personal life and about five categories in my professional life. And then you kind of drill it down. You say, well, what's important about my health or what's important about my relationships or what's important about my finances? What's important about my career? And you get really crystal clear about what's important to you. Rather than chasing goals, what's motivating you are your values. You know, I remember years ago, I was up in Manchester, Connecticut, and I was ready to give a speech and someone came up to me like, I would say like five minutes before I was going to give the speech and they wanted my attention. And I, I, I take myself as a kind person. I didn't want to be rude to this person, but this person came up to me and said, I need to talk to you. And then they went on to explain their situation. I said, listen, I would love to talk with you, but not right now. Not right now. Like this, this was the boundaries, right? Not right now because this, this really is important. You know, this is important. I got to do this, but let's talk afterwards, right? So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about rather than setting goals that you probably will never achieve, especially if you forget about them. Once you get in touch with what you truly value, it's not a struggle. You know, some people can say, you know, I want to travel the world. That's a goal of mine. Or I want to be in shape. That's a goal of mine. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'll achieve it. Maybe they won't. But when it comes to values and you're really clear on your values, you tend to move towards what you value. Um, years ago, I came across uh, an author that lives in New York. I think he's still in New York, Mark Mason. Now, I won't give you the full title, but you can Google him. You probably know who I'm talking about. He wrote a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving A. Yeah, I'm not going to fill in the rest of the words. I love the book. And it's kind of coming from a stoic philosophy mindset. And what he's saying in the book, and I highly recommend it as well, Mark Mason, the subtle art of not giving a. And what he's saying is you can't care about everything, right? It's impossible. I know people want us to care about, you know, this and that and their cause. And, you know, I mean, if you go on YouTube, a commercial pops up. I want you to care about, I don't know, whatever it is. There's millions of causes. There's thousands of causes out there, right? We would go insane if we tried to run after all of these things. It's totally impossible. So what he's saying in the book is, if you want to live a carefree life and you want to live according to your values, you got to realize that not everything is important, okay? I, I learned a long time ago that people's opinion is probably not high on my ladder of importance. You have a hundred people in a room and you give a speech, how are you gonna control what people think? You can't, you can't. All you can do is deliver what you have to say, your point of view, your persuasion, but you can't control what people think. You can't control what people think of you. And it's, it's that way in your life as well. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe you need to control or think about or be concerned about what your wife thinks of you or your husband or your children or your boss or some of your close friends. I get that, but not everybody. Not, you know, you're driving on the highway and people are going past you. You would go insane if you thought, well, that guy just went by and he didn't even look at me. And that guy cut me off. And this, this person did this. The other day I was driving in Hartford. This guy was on the, the right side of the emergency lane. I think it was yesterday, Saturday. And he cut off on that right lane and came over to the next lane, then went to the next lane and bumped. I thought, I'm not getting involved. Like, I am not get, I'm not following the guy. I'm not going to get involved. I am not... This is not important to me. That was interesting, right? So what Mark Mason is saying in the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving, is once you start dialing down and you shut off the world and you're like, listen, I'm not falling for this clickbait. I'm not falling for this telemarketer. I'm not falling for this person trying to sell me snake oil. I am not buying into this story. There's only a few things that are really important to me and I know what they are and that's what I'm gonna go after. That's it, I'm sorry. 
You know, maybe you say it's God, maybe you say it's family, maybe it's, I don't know, but it's not everything. And, and, and this is what Mark Mason gets into, and he kind of hits home by saying, listen, in a hundred years, you're not going to care about any of these things. And the people that you know are not even going to care about you. You know, there's going to be a time, and it's kind of morbid, where no one's going to be mentioning your name. Nobody's going to know who you are. Why are you so obsessed about what people are thinking? Or why are you so obsessed about the past? Or why are you so concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow? It's all nonsense. It's called the subtle art of not giving a you-know-what. So this is 100% personal. And it's different for every single person. What is important to you? Because if you don't know, if you don't dial it down, then you're going to be like a boat without a rudder. Everything that comes into your environment is going to sway you and get your attention. And, you know, successful people, they don't tend to sh run after shiny ob objects. You know, they know what they want. They know what they value. They know what's important to you or them. And they focus on those things. I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm not perfect. But the point of the letter I for importance is to realize that it's specific and it's not everything. You know, I'll ask people at my lecture what's important and they'll, they'll look at me like I'm crazy. Like, what do you mean what's important? Well, if I were to ask them what's your goal, again, they'd be the same way. You know, I don't know what my goal is. I don't know, getting up early in the morning, going to work, feeding the kids, being a good husband, being a good wife, being a good citizen. That's all. You know, people don't know. But when you really get clear on your values, like for me, one of my biggest values is freedom. One of my biggest values is independence, right? And so no matter what I'm doing in life, that motivates me. It's, it's kind of like the software that's running behind the computer system. You know, it's like when I have to make decisions about do I want to go here or do I want to go there? Do I want to do this? Do I want to write a book? Do I want to do a speech? What's the motivational factor behind all of it? It's what's important to me deep down, deep down in my core. And that is, I want to be the boss. I want to call the shots. I want to be the creative person. I want to be the person that has the freedom. Now, I don't want to get into why that is, you know, and it doesn't really matter why that is for me. What's the thing which is important to you, which motivates you? And sometimes you have to get really, really quiet. Maybe you journal, maybe you ask your friends, maybe you ask your family. You have to reflect to figure it out. It's not necessarily a shiny brand new car. It's not necessarily a million dollars in the bank. It's not necessarily being married. These are all great things to have, to possess. But what I'm talking about when I'm asking the question, what's important? I'm asking, what is it that you value? What is it that you really value above anything else, right? Now, if we had more time and we don't, we only have about five minutes left, six minutes left, I would say the next step is to put these things that you value or things that are important to you in a structure, like a hierarchy. Like number one is creative freedom. Number two is independence. Number three is financial freedom you know so you're kind of like scaling down for number one number two number three number four number five and you got to realize that not everybody sees the world the same way and this gets back to what we talked about last last week we talked about deciding how you see the world you might sit down with another person and what they value and what they see as important is totally different from you and that's fine that's fine and you just got to understand that maybe their metaphor for life how they see the world, how you see the world isn't the same, and what they value. I mean, how can it be, you know? I, I think, I was talking to somebody today about dating. I, I think when people get together, rather than asking them, so what's your sign and what's your history? Have you been married before and all these other things? You know, what's your favorite color? Like, what do you do? What are your hobbies, right? These are all fun things, right? But I, I think 
for people to be compatible, these values have to be pretty much in line. You know, if you have somebody that loves to travel because they love to be free, and then you have another person that wants to work at an accounting firm nine to five and get two weeks off a year, and freedom is not that important to them, and what's really important to them is really just job security, there might be a little bit of conflict. This could be friends, right? Um, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm just going to say this. A lot of the people that I've known for 30 years, I have outgrown them or they have outgrown me. And it's not a bad thing. It's just that, you know, some of the people that I met when I was 17, we had values and what we held in common, what we saw was important back in the 70s and 80s. They don't see it that way anymore or I see it differently. So this is really important, especially if you're working in an office and getting along with other people and supervisors. It's not only understanding what's important to you, what's important to your boss, what's important to your coworkers, and, and seeing it through their eyes. Or if you're in sales, right? If you're in sales, what's important to the person you're sitting across the table with? What's important to them? Are you just going to talk about what's important to you? Probably not. Probably got, not going to get anywhere. So the key here is, I think, recognize what's important to you, but then also recognizing what's important to other people that you work with, or your family, or the people that you're selling to, or the people that you meet. And I got to tell you, I wish, <laughs> I'm going to do this, I know it sounds crazy, but I wish everybody had this on their forehead so that you could read the answer. You know, you could walk into a room and you go, oh, I see your family's important to you. I see that money's important to you. Oh, I see that freedom's important to you. And you'd be able to peg people. Now, of course, if you just listen to people, they're going to give you cues. You know, they're going to tell you. Uh, get to know people a little better. You're going to pretty much figure it out, right? Because there's not a million categories. There's only a few categories. Uh, there's the professional. There's the personal, and then when you take a look at, you know, how many uh, limited pieces of the pie there are, finance, money, spirituality, freedom, whatever it is, there's not a million, and just by asking questions, you can kind of figure it out where people are coming from. So last week, we talked about, number one, decide the metaphor for life. Then decide where you are in different categories. Today, we talked about what is important. Next week, we're going to talk about the letter A, which is aim, right? So we're going to aim towards something. Think about it if you went to, uh, I don't know, uh, a wedding or a party and you had a camera with you. You're going to aim it towards certain places in the room to take photos. You're not going to be going like this and taking photos everywhere, right? So with a camera, you're going to aim towards what is important to you. Getting that picture of the bride and groom. If you're at a wedding, that's important. If you're at a, a birthday party, you're going to aim at the person blowing out the candles. You're not going to aim at everything, right? So next week we're going to talk about the letter A, which is aim. Now, last week we talked about decide. It was a rant. Today we talked about the topic, what is important to you. If I were to give you any homework, I would say kind of reflect. Reflect this week. Have a little time of meditation, maybe in the morning or afternoon. Do a little bit of journaling and ask yourself the question, what is important to me? And dial that down. Rather than setting a goal, which is, which is fine, right? I have many goals. I'm sure you do too. But really asking the question, what is important? So as I say all the time, until next time, stay focused. Can you imagine that? I hope you can. Talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody. You've been listening to the Greg Dwyer Radio Show. Brought to you by motivational speaker Greg Dwyer on buildingfortunesradio.com. Check out Greg at gregdwyer.com. Be sure to download his ebook at gregdwyerebook.com to stay focused on what matters most to you. That's www.gregdwyerebook.com. We want to thank you for listening. And go make a difference in your world.